Hello again. Here's a question. How hard is Kerbal Space Program's hardest mod, Realistic Progression 1? Well, this mod turns KSP from a silly but surprisingly deep space game with tiny planets and funny green guys into the most hardcore, insanely difficult space agency management game in existence. And I am going to stream it on both YouTube and Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at these times until I beat it. But how do you beat it? Well, this mod starts us off on Earth in the year 1951. The Soviets and the Americans have begun the space race, and in 18 years, on the 20th of July 1969, the Americans will win the space race by landing a man on the moon. This, however, is an alternate history timeline, where Kim Il-sung, glorious leader of North Korea, has hired me as the director of the North Korean Space Agency, and tasked me with one simple goal. Land a man on the moon before the Americans. Otherwise, he'll execute me. Which is bad. Probably. So that's our goal. Land on the moon within 18 years. That sounds like plenty of time, and in normal KSP you can land on the moon in about 3 days. So what makes RP-1 so much harder? Well, firstly, the physical challenges. Kerbin is this big, the Earth is 10 times bigger. This means we need about 4 times the delta V just to get into orbit. So I built a rocket and began flying it to orbit, but this engine is unreliable, so it fails and we crash into the ocean. If you burn an engine for longer than it's rated for, it fails and we crash into the ocean. There are about 8 million different fuels. In base KSP, it's almost impossible for a plane to rip its wings off. In RP-1, it is not. Most rocket engines in real life can't throttle. I accidentally put the throttle to zero, and now the engine can't be lit again, and we crash into the ocean. If I want to control this rocket, it needs avionics. But avionics are heavy, so instead we can just spin it. But whoopsie-daisy, we spun it wrong, and now we've struck Japan. The first stage on this rocket had finished burning, but now I can't light the second stage because the fuel inside the tanks is floating, and there's a chance that the engine ingests an air bubble and explodes, so you guessed it, we crash into the ocean. There are a lot of different engines to choose from, but actually there are way more because each engine has several different configurations. The mod Principia changes how KSB calculates orbits to use an end-body simulation, so now orbital maneuvers look like this. If I leave a Kerbal in the radiation belt for too long, he fucking dies from radiation poisoning. Science experiments now take time to run. Some take minutes, some hours, and some entire months. So that sounds pretty difficult, but it gets worse. The management challenges. Absolutely everything in this mod takes time. Researching technology takes time, and the time it takes depends on how many researchers we've hired. The base KSP tech tree is small and pathetic and easy. RP-1's tech tree looks like this, and is much more gated. Oh, you want to research 1956 to 1957 orbital rocket engines? Sorry fucko, first you need to research this material science node. Oh, so you want to make a rocket with that new tech? Sorry fucko, first you need to build a launch complex. Launch complex? I think it's pretty simple. I'm going to fucking kill you. A launch complex is a set of buildings that can construct, fuel, and launch our rocket. And it takes three months to build. Then we need to staff our launch complex by hiring engineers. Then we can build our rocket. But not so fast, fucko. We don't have the tools to make this rocket. Our engineers can still build it, but it's going to take three times as long and cost three times as much. So we buy the tools to make the parts for the rocket, build the rocket, that takes another three months, then roll it onto the pad, that takes two weeks, and finally, we can't launch because we haven't trained our astronaut on the equipment. So we train him up, strap him in, launch, and it fucking fell into the ocean again. Yeah. Lucky for us, we have this button, simulate, that allows us to quickly test out our rockets to make sure they'll actually work before we launch them into the abyss. You can tell it's a simulation because at the top of the screen it says, simulation. So if we destroy our rockets or kill our kerbals in a horrific manner, it's fine. Money is no longer about how much money we have in the bank, but more about cash flow. To make money, we accept programs, like this one for developing X-Planes. It's going to give us this much funding over this much time, and to complete the program we need to complete these contracts. Contracts like reach the speed of sound with an aircraft, or fly an aircraft at 22 kilometers. We also get money by having reputation. More rep equals more money up to a cap. All of this adds up to the most hardcore space management simulator ever created, and I am going to beat it. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday over the next several months, apart from Christmas, I'll be streaming at these times. God, I hate Australian time zones. As of writing this, my save is two years old in 1953, and all we've done is launch some small sounding rockets, some large sounding rockets, accidentally strike Japan a couple of times, and we've almost killed our only astronaut, Patrick Jenkins, several times. The nugget. Will this be a video? Yes. Will we reach the moon by July 20, 1969? I fucking hope so. Will Father Kim Il-sung be proud? I want him to be proud. Please be proud of me, Kim. <laughs> Will we maintain a reputable, respectable space program? Or will the immense weight of responsibility prove too much to bear for my feeble mind? Oh, and the mod list is in the description.